Hey, fellow gliders, welcome back. Today, we're going to continue our integration series and specifically look at the emailing integrations that came out in this past week. So Glide has always had the ability to email through the, either the compose email action or the send email action. We now have a Gmail and an Outlook email action. So let's take a look at each of those and when you would use each within your Glide app. Now, if you haven't taken a look at any of my integration videos yet, make sure you click right over here or in the link in the description below so you can get caught up with how to add integrations and some of the limitations with integrations moving forward before moving on to the rest of this video. Now, as I mentioned before, Glide has already had a couple of ways to do emailing within an app. Let's take a look at this one here with blog posts. I'm going to dive into a specific post, and here I have created a series of buttons that kind of showcase what Glide has been able to do and what we're planning on building within the app. Now, when adding email integrations to your app, you're going to fall into one of two scenarios. Either one, you want the user to generate an email in order to share some content with somebody else in your app, or you want the app to send an email or, to or you want the user to receive an email from the app or from an admin or from some sort of notification service in order to remind themselves of something that's happening within the app. So we'll talk about each of these. Let's take a look at the first scenario where we want the user to generate an email to somebody else. So here I have a button that says email this to somebody else. It's just a, a button that has a show notification right now, but we're gonna change that to compose an email. That's really the best way to allow a user to generate an email from their own account. So you just change the action to compose email, and then this action can be set up by specifying the to field, the subject, the body, and so forth. So the to will be left blank. We'll let them fill that out as part of their email client. The subject, you can type something in here, um, or you can specify a column. So maybe the subject here will be the title of the blog post. For the body, I created a template column that just has some information and a link to the current screen. And then that's it. So now when I click on this email, this to someone else, it's gonna open up a new tab. It's gonna generate an email from their email client, from their email address, but it includes the information that you specified in the app. So this is one of the easiest ways to allow a user to compose an email from their own account and send it to somebody else. Now you could also allow a user to send an email from the app by using the send email action. The difference is it won't be sent from their account, but rather it'll be sent from the app itself on behalf of that user. So to show you that, I'm gonna add another action here to this button. We'll do the same thing. In this case, instead of compose email, we're gonna choose send email. All right, so we're gonna send email. Now, it needs to know who to send it to. So we actually need to fill out the to form here. Otherwise, the action will error. So I can create, let's say, a text entry component. I'll add it right above the button. And I can write it to a user-specific to field, let's say. And then that action can only occur if that to field is filled out. All right, so we see the button's not appearing here because that to field is empty. And now we kind of go through the same thing. So I'm going to hide the BCC. The subject will be the title. The body will be the body. And then the reply to can be their own email. So that way, in case their friend wants to reply to them, it'll actually reply to the person who sent it. So we can do the reply to user profile email. Okay, so now when they fill up the to field here, right, now we have that button appear. When they hit that button, we can have some other action occur to like clear the to field as well if we wanted to. And now we should receive an email with the information from this blog post. Now here's where it differs. If I go to my email, we see that I have a new email from the app itself and it has that same body. And in this case though, it's sent from the app. It's not sent from that user. So here we see that it has, it's sent from notifications at appuser.io. It's not sent from my Gmail. However, if I go to reply to this email, it will reply to the reply to that you had set up as part of that client app. So it's nice about using the send email action. It's, got, it's pretty, it already is set up a little bit, it's got some styling and everything, but you lose that customization. You also lose that personal touch of having it being sent from your own email address. So that's the trade-off, and it's a little bit more set up in this case. So that's why I don't recommend going that route unless you wanted the email to come from your app. 
Now, the second scenario is allowing the app to send an email to a user for notification purposes or reminder purposes. And just to see an example of this, I created another button here that says, email this blog post to me. So it's kind of the same premise where here I can add a send email action. And for the to field, we'll choose the user profile email, right? And again, we'll clear the BCC and the CC and the title for the subject, body for the body. And then the reply to can be left empty because it's a no reply, let's say. And then clicking this email to me will again generate that email to my email address, right? And it has the exact same information, except for now I can't reply to it because it is a, a no reply. Usually use the send email action at the end of an action sequence in order to notify the user of something. For example, whenever an employee fills out their time card, the admin can get an email with a digest of what just happened. Or let's say I just completed my profile and my onboarding experience in the app. And now the user can receive a welcome email, just giving them some more information about the app and next steps. Now this works really well if you want the email to come from Glide or come from your app with this anonymous email. But if you wanted that email to come from Outlook or come from Gmail, you at previous to this week, you would have to create some sort of make scenario or Zapier Zap in order to make that happen. No longer the case. Now we have some integrations that we can leverage. So going back to our Glide app, we can go to settings, integrations, and we can actually add Gmail or we can add Outlook. Okay, so let's add both. Let's see how we can do this here. So for Gmail, I'm going to add to my app. I'm going to authenticate and continue. Okay, Gmail has been added to my app. Let's go back and add Outlook. So same deal, Microsoft Outlook, add to app. I'll authenticate. Okay, Outlook has been added, great, let's go back. And now we can set up these buttons in the exact same fashion. So this email to me here button, we would just leverage Gmail instead of the send email. So for the button block for Gmail, I'll search for email. Here we have Gmail send email and we fill out the information. So our to field will be whoever we're sending to, in this case myself, right? Uh, for subject, again, it be the title for body, that body that I created as part of the template column. All right, let's see if this works. I'm going to hit email to me, and I should receive an email in my Gmail. And there's my email. So diving in, we can see that this email is very raw, right? It does, it's not as pretty or as formatted as Glide send email. So yes, so if you're using the send email via Gmail or the send email via Outlook, you're gonna have to craft it using some HTML and some inline CSS to make it look prettier. So I'd go back to my Glide app, edit the template column that's for the body, and I have to add in some HTML. So check out this awesome blog post, maybe it's a header one, so I could say, or a header two. So I'd add in a header two tag and close it up. Right, I have to add line breaks myself. So headers are automatically have line breaks. This next part is a link, so I'd have to use the HTML in order to specify that this is a link. And these are just things that I've picked up along the way. You can certainly Google search how to type out a link in HTML, or you can have chat GPT create it for you, right? And then uh, you simply go ahead and just plug it in. So this can be, uh, you know, click here and then wrap that up. So you just use some basic HTML. I hit done. I'm testing this out, I'm gonna go ahead and email this new HTML to me, go back to my email, give it a refresh, and we see here's the email with some basic HTML. So all in all, if you're planning on using the Gmail or Outlook integration, just know you are gonna have to craft the HTML as part of the email body in order to make your emails look pretty. Now, if you're not good at crafting HTML, and let's face it, none of us really are unless you spend some time actually doing it, what you can do instead is craft your email in Markdown language, which is much more approachable, and then use some glide columns to convert that to HTML. So here's what I mean. So in my data section, what I can do instead is I can craft my email using, this doesn't actually need to be there. Let's delete that. Um, I can craft my email using just markdown language, right? Really easy to edit. 
and replace using a template column. And then I can convert this into HTML using Glide's markdown to HTML column. All I do is specify the body, I hit done, and then I can send this via my email. And if I were to email this using Glide's send email action, let's say, go back to my email, give it a refresh, and we should see that the HTML comes through. So look at that. So here's the image, here's some text, but it's being bolded, here's a link and all the fun things. So another little useful hack in case you're not good at writing HTML. So why use Gmail and Outlook over Glide's email? Because again, if you're using Glide's send email, the email that comes from Glide is already styled and it's beautiful, but it comes from notifications at appuser.io, some sort of anonymous email address, which might be picked up by spam or blockers, depending upon your organization's email settings. So if you're having an internal tool and you want that email to be sent internally using the same email client that the rest of your company uses, you might want to look into crafting that email using one of these integrations. So hopefully this video gave you a nice high level view as to how you can leverage the Gmail and Outlook integrations in your app. If you like this video, make sure you hit all those buttons below so that way you can get notified the next time I create an integrations video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. You can also reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.